You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode 706. As always, we thank you from the depths of our hearts for spending a few minutes He's of got a day. deep heart. I got a cold, icy, blooded heart, but he's got a big, warm one. That is not so true. So when he says that, he actually means it. I do mean it, but he doesn't have a cold heart. He likes to play tough, icy, tough guy. I'm a tough mother. But he has a big heart, too. Don't let him fool you. Anyways, we are glad that you're with us, and um, I think this is a question that we've talked about before, but it's been a little while, and I'm always curious to know when we get a question like this, like the details behind what's going to actually happen, because we're talking about indoors. Indoor flights, not navigable airspace. All right. Shall Here's we do it? All right. Answer. So here's some. <laughs> 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 I know some of these have been a little bit short, but we want to get the questions answered, right? So we're not picking questions based on how long of a podcast then they, can they give us. I think it's also a good idea, at least for the YouTube crowd, to give people the long and the short answer and just say, like, okay, and the short answer is, here's your answer, but here's why. And I think that's a yeah. better way to kind of run things, and that's how I'm going to plan on answering the questions kind of from here on out. So wow. just making you a snap it first. decision. Boom. Like <laughs> that you, never happens. Like you guys said in the snap meeting yes, yesterday, I only think three days ahead. So <laughs> 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 anyway, um, thinking ahead, though, I do end up going to a lot of areas to fly drones where I don't have access to power. I actually saw someone, uh, his name is Aldrin from San Diego, is now getting into the Energen team as well. So welcome. Um, but I will say that uh, Energen has been really awesome for me. And there's a reason that they advertise on this podcast. And it's because we actually use their products. So if you're like me and you go out in the field and you need to charge your Phantom or Mavic batteries to ensure that you're constantly flying while you're driving around to the next location, or maybe you're traveling in an area where you don't have access to a power outlet or even an inverter for power, you've got to check out Energen. Because if you go to myenergen.com forward slash shop, you can actually buy a battery charger that will help you charge up to four batteries at once. If you have a Mavic Pro, you can get the Mavic charger. Just uh, check out the M10 battery charger. But better yet, use the discount code DRONEUM10. That way you can charge your Mavic batteries on the road and save $20 off an M10 charger. But anyway, let's hear the question, Rob. Hey, how you doing? I wanted to know, can I fly my drone indoors without a pilot license and make money while I'm filming inside doors? Hmm. So again, I'm kind of curious what Eric's thinking of doing here, but... Um... A lot of issues, actually. I mean, I, I, we know the answer. Okay, so just really, really quick. The answer is yes, you can. It's not navigable airspace. It is inside. People use drones as gimbals all the time inside. Sometimes they're not even flying. I give the example of OK Go's um, uh, music video where they used an S1000 and a RED camera on a dolly to create the video that they wanted because they just loved the ability to manipulate the gimbal with mm -hmm. a, you know, just a smooth controller. And I think it sure. was a, a great idea. So um, the answer to his question is yes, but as soon as he goes outside, he would need a part 107 certificate in order to fly commercially. But if he's flying inside, it's not navigable airspace and thus it's not um, maintained, controlled, regulated, or enforced by the FAA. So he can absolutely fly inside and make money off of it. There's there's nothing about that. That's actually been a point of contention. In fact, uh, one of the union reps uh, out of California tried telling me that there were all these rules and we were flying inside of a studio. And I was all, back up, homie, because unless you can uh, <laughs> provide some legal documentation right now, I'm going to keep flying. Which he couldn't. And you got a lumpy butt. So, I mean, <laughs> that's what I told him. Oh, man, that must have hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Emotionally, physically, to have a lumpy butt, I don't know. <laughs> so what are some of the issues, though, of flying inside? I think, obviously, safety is a very big one. Well, yeah, I mean, also, you can't rely on GPS. That's huge. So make yeah. sure you're not flying in GPS. Uh, flying with a newer bird and vision positioning system on is going to be really helpful in maintaining a position. 
Um, I like to fly in attitude mode myself because sometimes even with VPS on, uh, you can get GPS interference. And if you get GPS interference, yes, you can run into something. So I would recommend that, you know, this is flying indoors um, is definitely for more advanced pilots. Mm -hmm. You can't always rely on VPS. You can get GPS errors and uh, run into things. And that is that has happened before. It will happen to people. So be aware of that. Be conscious of that. Um, and you should be okay. I mean, there, yeah. there are things to be aware of. Like, you know, you don't... I've seen most people get um, sucked into the roof of buildings. So if you are flying inside, you're going to want to make sure that you actually set your return to home altitude in case you do get GPS or in case you do lose the remote signal. What are you going to tell the drone to do? Because you can tell it to hover in place. It may try to return. Okay, if it's going to return, what is its return to home altitude? Because that's got to be lower than whatever the roof line is. That's really important as well. Hmm. I mean, there are levels of depth of information that we can go here. But as far as their sensors go, you're going to want to make sure you clean off your VPS sensors on the bottom of your drone. You're going to want to make sure that if you're flying a Phantom 4 Pro that you clean off the side sensors. Just wipe them off. Use, you know, a lens cleaner that you can buy from Costco or, or Sam's Club. You can get literally like 2,000 of them for like 50 bucks. Those are things you're going to want to do when you're flying inside. It's really important to maintain a safe flight. Also, I would get prop guards or prop cages. That way, if you do hit something, you just keep flying yeah. and no haircuts. No haircuts. And you... It, it seems a good idea to me to practice with like a micro drone or I don't know, just something that's not your 1500 or your 2500 and beyond drone. Yeah. I hope my nephews don't listen to the podcast. I don't think they do. So I'm just going to give it away. But I uh, got some Star Wars drones for them mm -hmm. for Christmas because, you know, uh, they're awesome. I want them myself. I don't even have them. <laughs> so they get them before I do. And um, they cool. it's a great it's a great practicing tool as well. Yeah, so, anything like that. Yeah, totally. If you want to look cool and enjoy flying, get a Star Wars drone. They're on sale right now on Amazon. So Yeah, and those are essentially flying attitude, right? I mean, they're not going to have GPS or anything no. like that. So yeah. you're flying and they're going to be doing, you're going to have to control the stoppage, etc. True. Yeah. You're going to so, have a lot of control, but it's going to force you to become a good pilot. Exactly. So. exactly. Especially if you fly a Star Wars one, you don't want to crash it because you'll never reach Jedi level. <laughs> that's, just saying yeah no that's what I'd be concerned about I've been about watching for sure. a lot of Star Wars because the new movie is coming out here soon. it is coming out yeah I'm pretty excited about that actually I, I'm excited about that yeah look it's still on sale so I'm going to give you the uh, I'm going to give you the link so you can put it on the show because hey who knows someone might want a Star Wars drone so anyway they are on sale but I think that's going to do it for us today it's not navigable airspace but guys don't confuse inside with like flying around Top Golf. Uh, just because Top Golf has nets, it's still outside, and the drone can still fly outside and pose um, a problem and safety um, risk to manned aircraft. So that would not uh, be cause for flying without Part 107. If yeah, you you've got to be flying inside. Just super important. But anyway, that's gonna do it for us today. Rob has a meeting to go to, so we will see you next time. My name's Paul. I'm Rob. This is the best drone podcast out there. Yeah.